So, John Power, as I live and breathe, um, have you you've, have you done a gig with a, a view as good as this one um, in the past? And no, I want to know. I'll no. be honest with you. No, actually, there's somewhere in Liverpool, the Liverpool Beacon, which has got, which is an old, used to be a, a restaurant which turned around like rotated, and that's quite high up. But this beats, I must say, this beats uh, most most views. Like it's it's amazing. We're way up high, looking over London, and uh, I was here. For Graham Norton, and I've seen it in the day. Yes. But seeing it in the evening now, at night time, it's kind of beautiful. Like, you know, it's, it's quite impressive. I good. must say, like, you well, know what I mean? Well, mate, it's good to have you back. Yes, thank you very much. It thanks. really is. Yeah, yeah it's good um, to be back. So, and, and how's, your, how's your set list looking? Are you going to hit them with hits? Well, you know, I'm just debating because I've just, I don't know if you were in the sound check, but we just did a song, the last song off the new album. Um, tomorrow calls my name which is just supreme it's an epic track and so I'm like right I've got to drop that in so we were going to do about four classic we were going to do I don't know if you want the set list we were going to mess around with like you know walk away all right and find yeah. time well there'd be a riot if you didn't do well those. we're going to do them <laughs> we're definitely going to do them and, and, and we're going to do like you know love is love is the call uh, love you like I do far away which is getting loads of great play on yeah. Virgin I must say thank you, know, you so much for it, that like. it's lovely to hear that you know because the album's out it's not out yet so I've not heard it but I have heard far away yeah, and okay. I have to say that it is as infectious and as soaring oh. and uplifting as anything that you've done in the roaring 90s I would say so and I love them them, them words that you used to describe it you know uplifting soaring you know I, I don't, that's pretty much how I view it too yeah I mean the, but, the vocal is just you know it's a classic uh pop guitar pop song but it lifts you know and, and, and it's yeah and it's classic you you know it yeah. sort of gets you there you know yeah. you you hear that I, I don't know what it is it's the scouse in you or but like there's you... something i know what you mean but I, it's funny because you know all these years later i'm kind of singing that you know the vocal delivery on it it's like full you know there's no falsetto it's just full i've really gone for it and it's really i've really it's really captured that so the song itself is that is the kind of guitar pop song on on the record you know but yeah good i'm glad it's in the set tonight oh definitely so new album coming oh, yeah. soon right yes it's out in a couple of days and 16th of february oh fantastic that's friday so yeah. Um, and I hear, uh, and a little bird tells me that Alan McGee might have something to do with with your with the renaissance that you're yeah. having. So, you're, so Alan, the, the McGee is managing yeah, you now. Yeah, he's here actually. He's just he's he's uh, just in the sound check then. Yeah, no, me and Alan, we go back. We were talking about things. You know, I think I just released a record. It was about seven years ago, and we were discussing how we can kind of, you know, I basically what Alan did was just tell it like it is you know he just basically he just told me exactly what i needed to do there was no kind of you know massaging my ego or anything no blowing just, of smoke well, he, yeah none of that <laughs> which is you know he just said john what you've got to do instead of looking for favors off people and looking for a lucky break and all that he said just go away and write you know i'm saying fantastic album he used different words but you know he he, he said that and he said when you come back with that he said i know you can do it he said, just go away and do it. And when you do that, you don't need a favour off anyone. You don't need a lucky break. Because when you write a great record, it speaks for itself, you know. Mm. And, uh, and it kind of made so much sense to me, really. I mean, I knew that. I was just waiting for someone, to be honest, someone to, to, to encourage me to do it. And so Alan was very instrumental in, as the, as the demos were coming, as I was writing the songs, it was, I'd be talking to Alan about them, really even before the band of course and alan because alan knew what i was on about and we both knew the the the, the kind of genre and the, the the identity of the of the the album how we what we wanted to get you know we wanted to get this kind of psychedelic pop very uh, energetic um bouncing and jumping sort of soaring melodies and all that so yeah it, it was very important and whose idea was it to put you in with good old youth well that was alan again that was Alan again. And um, Have you worked with him before? I hadn't worked with youth. I knew of him. And I went to meet him. And, and strangely, our, our first meeting was a little bit lukewarm, you know. I, he hadn't heard the demos. I, w I was like... He, he, I think, I, once again, my ego, I was expecting people... Normally, a producer t tends to tell you what you want to hear. Yeah. You know, they kind of go, Yeah, John, I've, yeah, I get what you mean. It's going to be this. He was very disinterested. Right. Well, so I went away and thought, oh, I'm not ready to... And then I had this strange dream where I was talking to this sort of spirit behind a mask. And in the dream, I worked out that it was youth. 
So I rang Alan up and said, look, I want another meeting. Yeah. And uh, I went back and met him and we got on like a house on fire and we were discussing all the different types of music. I played him the demos and he was just like, right, okay, let's make this record. And he kind of thinks it's, you know, a career high point. He thinks, you know, we, we'd yet to make the album we needed to. And I think this is maybe the record that he was talking about that we've made. He's a real vibe guy, oh, isn't he? He's such a great guy. I mean, honestly, I've never worked on a on a creative. Um, I, I, you know, I am as a songwriter. Quite often, you can be protective of, of your ideas, because it was uh, with youth. You know, I let him in. I let him into the creative process. We were up in the, you know, early on. We'd be arranging the songs, and and ideally, talking about far away, for instance, the demo version of that is a real. It's it's a slow um, kind of pumping acoustic bit like across the universe it was the the kind of ballad of of the of the demos i thought it was like going to be the you know the, that lovely song that everybody loves and through youth's kind of encouragement and, and ideas I, I i turned it completely inside out and turned it into a really energetic pop song um so just that just that was worth working with him but he was brilliant all through it He's such a great character such a great person. He genuinely is is the real deal. He's like a yeah. picnic boho poet, producer, musician, and he cooks dinner for us every night in the studio. <laughs> oh, that's We're, good to hear. Whilst producing the record, you <laughs> I know, think, he's just flicking on the pan. I think that's, a, ba- I think that's, that's a bass player thing. I think. Yeah, I mean, he's, <laughs> it was quite something. To, but we had a wonderful time in the studio, um, you know, in Andalusia. And it was January, we'd, we'd all gone over there. It was really grim in Britain. Mm. It was dark and rainy and cold. And we were in the Andalusian mountains and it was clear blue skies. And it was ju- just such a creative place to be, obviously, you know. Wonderful. Well, what lovely hands to be in, you know. And it must have felt good to you to be with the man that made Bittersweet Symphony and a yeah. girl like you and, yeah. you know, well, or, not to mention all the Killing Joke records that he did back in the day, you know. It was all those things, but also... It was like when two great, when forces meet forces, you know, I knew I had the makings of of the best thing that cast had done this century, you know, easily, you know. And I, I just, the excitement was just whether we were going to do it justice. And so youth was in the right place at the right time with the right songs and the band's mentality and the, the band's outlook was all, everything was so positive, you know. I mean, you can work with people and just not have the right songs or it can be the wrong time in your career, you know, or the the band are playing a different type of music. We were all, we all got the picture once we started recording. Everybody dropped their shoulders, dropped their egos, and it was all about making the, the best and greatest record that we could at this present moment. And I think we've done that. And, you know, I'll let people be the judge of that when they hear it. That's lovely to hear. So did you split up and then get back together or were you just always going did you never have that sort of no, awkward we, phone call we, we split up well i think we split up for about nine years i think it came to the end of the you know post brit pop vibe we were worn out i was worn out i was stressed i fell out of love with who i was hmm. you know the honeymoon was over um and yeah i mean i just put it down and i just I didn't sing walk away fine time i didn't sing them for a decade i couldn't bring myself to do it I eventually got back playing music. I went uh, in about 2005. I, I did a reunion with the Lars. Mm. We played for about a year or two. And I kind of got my creative juices going again. And I started doing a couple of um, solo albums. And then we did a few cast albums and things. But I, everything's been building up to the moment. You're always trying to see around the curve. And I just feel like, you know, we've made that record. I, I You know, I, I think we've made that record. And it gives you a detachment and you feel liberated and although I'm talking to you with, with you know with, with, with great sorts of um, you know energy about it I'm quite happy to just sit back now because I know it's the best thing we could have done at this present moment so yeah we did split up and now and now I'd like to think we're back and, whatever back is and how does it feel second time round is it better because you are wiser totally and have more stories to tell totally I mean I would I wouldn't trade where I am now for all that, you know, crazy, mad success and the 90s. I mean, it was a good, great time to be a band. But do yeah. I want to go back there? No, I don't. I, you know, I've got a lot of, uh, as I said, the, the conversation we're having now, 
there's a place to be and it's right here and it's right now and I'm quite sort of you know liberated from the neediness and the ego where I, you know I hope people like it oh I really do as if it's going to really affect the body of work is what it is regardless of someone's opinion of it and that's something you've got to learn in life you know you make the best thing that you can not to please other people but just for to give the art justice and as players we're looser but tighter I and mean, we're a better band now performing wise than we ever were well with players as ever it's about practice it's yeah. about longevity yeah. and sustainability and of course you're going to be tight there yeah. i had this conversation with with ub40 but you've hit the nail on the head about creativity and art as rick rubin who is so wise oh, yeah. said in his wonderful book yeah. you've got to make art for yourself of course yeah you, 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 no it's true i mean and it's funny this because you can read the books and you can, you know, all the self-help this and you can read, you know, the Buddhist and I've done it all for 30 years, you know. But when it comes into the moment, those moments of clarity, they're, they're not pushed. They're not, it's, it's strange. They're nothing special. They're just a let going of, of, of trying to be something or trying to attain something. So you just let go, you know, you allow it to be what it is. But I think the wisdom of 30 years, 35 years being on the road, recording and writing has given me the, the, the confidence to recognise them moments now and to feel free to say, you know, I don't need to contain it or own it or control it. I've just got to be a conduit for it. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, now, you mentioned the 90s uh, it, on lots of levels, which reminds me, you're going on tour with good old Liam, aren't oh, you? God, yeah. I mean, that's, that is going to be amazing. I mean, it's, it's amazing because, like, you know, Liam is such a character, such a, such a great vocalist, and he's doing definitely Maybe, which is, you know, such a seminal record yes. of that time, their, their debut. Um, that's amazing for us. I mean, having an album... The new album is amazing, but also having the ticket on Liam's tour, they're two just amazing, you know, like really big events for cast. Um, we're going to, yeah, we're going out in June. We're going to be doing, I think we're doing 10 dates of the 15 or 14. So, you know, um, yeah, it was, it, it, it's such a thrill to be on that. It's going to be such a thrill. And uh, we're going to hopefully reconnect with people who, who know the band and maybe have forgotten us and the younger generation who are coming through massively well, that's with all it. this music. You know. Well, that's it. You, you've, again, hit the nail on the head. You're going to definitely reconnect with people because and he draws a massive oh, amount of people now. He's been, people yeah, night, so, he, you, know, you know, like who needs Oasis? Yeah. He's, you know, he's, he doesn't have to split everything with his brother yeah. anymore. But, but more to the point, he's attracting kids. Yeah. The, the children of the, of the people of, of us that were loving him and yeah. loving it in the 90s are all there and absolutely Absolutely loving him. So you're going to pick up a whole well, new that fan would be base. Beautiful, uh, you know. Because I mean, I sometimes wonder: is it like the way I used to look? You know, when I was in the '90s, the way I used to look at the Clash or the Who from the '60s and the '70s. You know, is is Britpop that era that young bands, young guitar bands of now will be looking at this golden age of British music? Um, so yeah, I mean. I'm just thinking about you know the younger generation who are getting into all, all the guitar bands from from that from that uh, period. It'd be a big inspiration to them. And they, the, the '60s was this amazing place to me. You know, it was like this mythical land where all these great bands, and then you had post the '70s and into punk. And I think Britpop is as they earned the right, although I never came up with the name and we didn't <laughs> like labels. But Britpop, the '90s, has probably earned the right for the eclectic music that was produced. In, in that decade uh, to inspire a generation ahead of us, you know. Absolutely. And it certainly is inspiring. Yeah. Um, I've got to say, I, I think we've got to wrap this up, haven't we, pretty soon. Uh, well, now, really. I've got to say, you don't just look good, John, but you oh. feel good. Like, you've got such a great energy and you seem very happy in your skin. Yeah. I, I, this is, the, I think, what the conversation we've had is all about. I feel detached, but that doesn't mean I don't care about the music. I feel the music has allowed me to step back from it because I know it's we've 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 written and recorded something you know I don't want to use the word great but it feels like a seminal record again and I think when you get that feeling you you, you recognize it especially at my age they don't come around all that you know that often you you know it's kind of to be that inspired to to get a record like that so I I just feel I'm in the I feel liberated um, 
from from the circus of rock and roll. I just feel a part, you know, the music. I'm so interested and excited that people are going to hear the new record. And I'm, you know, I'm just very excited because I feel like it's the best thing maybe we've done. Fantastic. That's great to hear. Yeah. You know, when, you, when, the, when the, <laughs> the best thing you've done is the last thing you've done, yeah. what a lovely position to yes. be in, John. Yeah, it is. Thank you. Well, JP, a pleasure to, to meet you properly, yeah. see you again. And actually, my last thing is actually more a question for me than it is for the radio. But well, actually, maybe it's for talk sport. Are you red or blue? Oh, I'm a red. Big, big Liverpoolian. So, yeah. so, so how are you feeling about I almost I was on the edge of tears mm. and I'm a Tottenham fan. Yeah. And I was on the edge of tears when Klopp yeah. read that you know, statement. It's just so emotional. How are you feeling about that well, whole thing? Well, Klopp is such an inspirational figure for Liverpool, FC and, and the City. But, you know, the minute he said it, I get it 100%. I've watched that man give more than he's got to give, you know, to the club. And, and you can't go on like that. You know, everything has to somehow has a seasonal adjustment. And, and, and I think he's, you know... I think he's doing the right thing because, you know, a man like that is so true to his um, intentions that he wouldn't do it if he hadn't thought about him. He loves Liverpool and Liverpool loves him. You know, he's brought us, he, you know, I mean, I would vote for Klopp. He's that type of guy. <laughs> I'd vote for I mean, him. I really do. I, I mean, genuinely, I just think he's got a lot of great ideas. I, I think is you know, so I, I, I wasn't sort of, oh, no, he can't do that. Because of even the conversation we had earlier, you know, I'm in that place where we're just passing through, all of us, in whether that's in stages of your life or the whole the whole journey. And Klopp is as lit up, you know, he's been like a pioneer, pioneering trailblazing manager and he's brought Liverpool, instilled all the kind of ethos that was so great about the club. And I think, you know, he wants to go because he's he he's he's spent yeah. You know, and uh, thank you so much, for, Jürgen, for like everything you've done. And and you know what? Yeah, go into the sunset, and you know because you, you, he's an amazing figure, amazing guy, very inspirational, and we all love him eternally. Yeah, absolutely. And it's I think it's beyond Liverpool. I think it's yeah. in, for British football, for, for so. English football. You know, it, it, it's he's phenomenal. I mean, he's the manager I, of Liverpool. Obviously, it's a bit tribal, but as a person, this is what I'm saying. As a person, I think most people. Can un can get on his character and his his ethos and his beliefs. He's a good guy, you know. Yeah. He's one of the good guys. Yeah, I got to leave you to it, and yeah. I'll say again, as a Spurs fan, I hope you win the championship this year. Ah, oh, God, I'd love it for for Clark, <laughs> you know. yeah. Thank you. What a pleasure.